Chapter 6. Manufacturing Industries. 6. Manufacturing Industries. On the occasion of Diwali, Harish went to a market with his parents. They purchased shoes and clothes for him. His mother purchased utensils, sugar, tea and dias, earthen lamps. Harish observed that the shops in the market were flooded with items for sale. He wondered how so many items could be made in such large quantities. His father explained that shoes, clothes, sugar etc. are manufactured by machines in large industries, some utensils are manufactured in small industries, while items like dias are made by individual artisans in household industry. Do you have some ideas about these industries? Production of goods in large quantities after processing from raw materials to more valuable products is called manufacturing. Do you know that paper is manufactured from wood, sugar from sugarcane, iron and steel from iron ore and aluminium from bauxite? Do you also know that some types of clothes are manufactured from yarn which itself is an industrial product? People employed in the secondary activities manufacture the primary materials into finished goods. The workers employed in steel factories, car, breweries, textile industries, bakeries etc. fall into this category. Some people are employed in providing services. In this chapter, we are mainly concerned with manufacturing industries which fall in the secondary sector. The economic strength of a country is measured by the development of manufacturing industries. Importance of Manufacturing Manufacturing sector is considered the backbone of development in general and economic development in particular mainly because Manufacturing industries not only help in modernizing agriculture, which forms the backbone of our economy, they also reduce the heavy dependence of people on agricultural income by providing them jobs in secondary and tertiary sectors. Industrial development is a precondition for eradication of unemployment and poverty from our country. This was the main philosophy behind public sector industries and joint sector ventures in India. It was also aimed at bringing down regional disparities by establishing industries in tribal and backward areas. Export of manufactured goods expands trade and commerce and brings in much needed foreign exchange. Countries that transform their raw materials into a wide variety of furnished goods of higher value are prosperous. India's prosperity lies in increasing and diversifying its manufacturing industries as quickly as possible. Agriculture and industry are not exclusive of each other. They move hand in hand. For instance, the agro-industries in India have given a major boost to agriculture by raising its productivity. They depend on the latter for raw materials and sell their products such as irrigation pumps, fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, plastic and PVC pipes, machines and tools, etc. To the farmers. Thus, development and competitiveness of manufacturing industry has not only assisted agriculturists in increasing their production but also made the production processes very efficient. In the present-day world of globalization, our industry needs to be more efficient and competitive. Self-sufficiency alone is not enough. Our manufactured goods must be at par in quality with those in the international market. Only then, will we be able to compete in the international market. Contribution of Industry to National Economy over the last two decades, the share of manufacturing sector has stagnated at 17% of GDP, out of a total of 27% for the industry which includes 10% for mining, quarrying, electricity and gas. This is much lower in comparison to some East Asian economies, where it is 25-35%. to 35%. The trend of growth rate in manufacturing over the last decade has been around 7% per annum. The desired growth rate over the next decade is 12%. Since 2003, manufacturing is once again growing at the rate of 9 to 10 percent per annum. With appropriate policy interventions by the government and renewed efforts by the industry to improve productivity, economists predict that manufacturing can achieve its target over the next decade. The National Manufacturing Competitiveness Council NMCC, has been set up with this objective. Industrial Location Industrial locations are complex in nature. These are influenced by availability of raw material, labor, capital, power and market, etc. It is rarely possible to find all these factors available at one place. Consequently, manufacturing activity tends to locate at the most appropriate place where all the factors of industrial location are either available or can be arranged at lower cost. After an industrial activity starts, urbanization follows. Sometimes, industries are located in or near the cities. Thus, industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand. 
Cities provide markets and also provide services such as banking, insurance, transport, labor, consultants and financial advice, etc. To the industry. Many industries tend to come together to make use of the advantages offered by the urban centers known as agglomeration economies. Gradually, a large industrial agglomeration takes place. In the pre-independence period, most manufacturing units were located in places from the point of view of overseas trade such as Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, etc. Consequently, there emerged certain pockets of industrially developed urban centers surrounded by a huge agricultural rural hinterland. Industry, Market Linkage, Fig. 6. 1. The key to decision of the factory location is the least cost. Government policies and specialized labor also influence the location of industry. Fig. 6. 2. Classification of industries. List the various manufactured products you use in your daily life such as, transistors, electric bulbs, vegetable oil, cement, glassware, petrol, matches, scooters, automobiles, medicines and so on. If we classify the various industries based on a particular criterion then we would be able to understand their manufacturing better. Industries may be classified as follows. On the basis of source of raw materials used. Agro-based. Cotton, woolen, jute, silk textile, rubber and sugar, tea, coffee, edible oil. Mineral-based. Iron and steel, cement, aluminium, machine tools, petrochemicals. According to their main role. Basic or key industries which supply their products are raw materials to manufacture other goods e. g. Iron and steel and copper smelting, aluminum smelting. Consumer industries that produce goods for direct use by consumers, sugar, toothpaste, paper, sewing machines, fans etc. On the basis of capital investment. A small scale industry is defined with reference to the maximum investment allowed on the assets of a unit. This limit has changed over a period of time. At present the maximum investment allowed is rupees 1 crore. If investment is more than 1 crore on any industry then it is known as a large scale industry. On the basis of ownership. Public sector, owned and operated by government agencies, BHEL, sale etc. Private sector industries owned and operated by individuals or a group of individuals Tisco, Bajaj Auto Limited. Dabur Industries. Joint sector industries which are jointly run by the state and individuals or a group of individuals. Oil India Limited. Oil is jointly owned by public and private sector. Cooperative sector industries are owned and operated by the producers or suppliers of raw materials, workers or both. They pool in the resources and share the profits or losses proportionately such as the sugar industry in Maharashtra, the quar industry in Kerala. Based on the bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods. Heavy industries such as iron and steel. Light industries that use light raw materials and produce light goods such as electrical industries. Activity. Classify the following into two groups on the basis of bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods. I. Oil. V. Sewing machines. E. Knitting needles. V. Shipbuilding. E. Brassware. V. Electric bulbs. I. V. Fuse wires. X. Paint brushes. V. Watches. X. Automobiles. Agro-based industries. Cotton, jute, silk, woolen textiles, sugar and edible oil, etc. Industry are based on agricultural raw materials. Textile industry. The textile industry occupies unique position in the Indian economy because it contributes significantly to industrial production, 14%, employment generation, 35 million persons directly, the second largest after agriculture, and foreign exchange earnings, about 24. 6%. It contributes 4% towards GDP. It is the only industry in the country which is self-reliant and complete in the value chain I. E. From raw material to the highest value added products. Fig. 6. 3. Value addition in the textile industry. Cotton textiles. In ancient India, cotton textiles were produced with hand spinning and hand loom weaving techniques. After the 18th century, power looms came into use. Our traditional industries suffered a setback during the colonial period because they could not compete with the mill made cloth from England. The first successful textile mill was established in Mumbai in 1854. The two world wars were fought in Europe, India was a British colony. There was a demand for cloth in U.K. Hence, they gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry. Today, there are nearly 1600 cotton and human made fiber textile mills in the country. About 80% of these are in the private sector and the rest in the public and cooperative sectors. 
Apart from these, there are several thousand small factories with four to ten looms. Why did Mahatma Gandhi lay emphasis on spinning yarn and weaving khadi? Table 5. 1. Production of fabric in India by various sectors. Sector 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011 asterisk. Provisional. Mills Sector 3. 33. 5. Power Loom 84. 184. 1. Hand Loom 11. 311. 1. Others 1. 31. 5. Total 100%. 100%. Note. 90% of the weaving, cutting and processing is in decentralized sector. Study the figures above and note the share of mills in the production of fabric. Why is it important for our country to keep the mill sector loomage lower than power loom and hand loom? India exports yarn to Japan. Other importers of cotton goods from India are U. S. A. U. K. Russia, France, East European countries, Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and African countries. India. Distribution of cotton, woolen and silk industries. In the early years, the cotton textile industry was concentrated in the cotton growing belt of Maharashtra and Gujarat. Availability of raw cotton, market, transport including accessible port facilities, labor, moist climate, etc. Contributed towards its localization. This industry has close links with agriculture and provides a living to farmers, cotton bull pluckers and workers engaged in ginning, spinning, weaving, dyeing, designing, packaging, tailoring and sewing. The industry by creating demand supports many other industries, such as chemicals and dyes, mill stores, packaging materials and engineering works. While spinning continues to be centralized in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu, weaving is highly decentralized to provide scope for incorporating traditional skills and designs of weaving in cotton, silk, zari, embroidery, etc. India has world-class production in spinning, but weaving supplies low quality of fabric as it cannot use much of the high-quality yarn produced in the country. Weaving is done by hand loom, power loom and in mills. The hand-spun khadi provides large-scale employment to weavers in their homes as a cottage industry. Yarn is sold at Rs. 85 per kilograms. If it is sold as a trouser it fetches 800 rupees per kilogram. Value is added at every stage from fiber to yarn to fabric and to garment. India has the second largest installed capacity of spindles in the world, next to China, at around 34 million, 2003 since the mid-80s, the spinning sector has received a lot of attention. We have a large share in the world trade of cotton yarn, accounting for one-fourth of the total trade. However, our trade in garments is only 4% of the world's total. Our spinning mills are competitive at the global level and capable of using all the fibers we produce. The weaving, knitting and processing units cannot use much of the high-quality yarn that is produced in the country. There are some large and modern factories in these segments, but most of the production is in fragmented small units, which cater to the local market. This mismatch is a major drawback for the industry. As a result, many of our spinners export cotton yarn while apparel, garment manufacturers have to import fabric. Why is it important for us to improve our weaving sector instead of exporting yarn in large quantities? Although, we have made significant increase in the production of good quality long staple cotton, 9,232 lakh bales in 2004-05, the need to import is still felt. Power supply is erratic and machinery needs to be upgraded in the weaving and processing sectors in particular. Other problems are the low output of labor and stiff competition with the synthetic fiber industry. Jute Textiles India is the largest producer of raw jute and jute goods and stands at second place as an exporter after Bangladesh. There are about 70 jute mills in India. Most of these are located in West Bengal, mainly along the banks of the Hugli River, in a narrow belt 98 kilometers long and 3 kilometers wide. The first jute mill was set up near Kolkata in 1859 at Rishra. After partition in 1947, the jute mills remained in India but three-fourth of the jute producing area went to Bangladesh, erstwhile East Pakistan. Factors responsible for their location in the Hugli Basin are Proximity of the jute producing areas, inexpensive water transport, supported by a good network of railways, roadways and waterways to facilitate movement of raw material to the mills, abundant water for processing raw jute, cheap labor from West Bengal and adjoining states of Bihar. Orissa and Uttar Pradesh. Kolkata as a large urban center provides banking, insurance and port facilities for export of jute goods. The jute industry supports two. 
61 lakh workers directly and another 40 lakh small and marginal farmers who are engaged in cultivation of jute and mesta. Many more people are associated indirectly. Challenges faced by the industry include stiff competition in the international market from synthetic substitutes and from other competitors like Bangladesh, Brazil, Philippines, Egypt and Thailand. However, the internal demand has been on the increase due to the government policy of mandatory use of jute packaging. To stimulate demand, the products need to be diversified. In 2005, national jute policy was formulated with the objective of increasing productivity, improving quality, ensuring good prices to the jute farmers and enhancing the yield per hectare. The main markets are U.S.A., Canada, Russia, United Arab Republic, U.K., and Australia. The growing global concern for environment-friendly, biodegradable materials has once again opened the opportunity for jute products. Sugar industry. India stands second as a world producer of sugar but occupies the first place in the production of Gurren Kansari. The raw material used in this industry is bulky and in haulage its sucrose content reduces. Where should the mills be ideally located? There are over 460 sugar mills in the country spread over Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat along with Punjab, Haryana and Madhya Pradesh. 60% mills are in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. This industry is seasonal in nature so, it is ideally suited to the cooperative sector. Can you explain why this is so? In recent years, there is a tendency for the mills to shift and concentrate in the southern and western states, especially in Maharashtra, this is because the cane produced here has a higher sucrose content. The cooler climate also ensures a longer crushing season. Moreover, the cooperatives are more successful in these states. Major challenges include the seasonal nature of the industry, old and inefficient methods of production, transport delay in reaching cane to factories and the need to maximize the use of bagus. Mineral-based industries. Industries that use minerals and metals as raw materials are called mineral-based industries. Can you name some industries that would fall in this category? Iron and steel industry. The iron and steel industry is the basic industry since all the other industries, heavy, medium and light depend on it for their machinery. Steel is needed to manufacture a variety of engineering goods, construction material, defense, medical, telephonic, scientific equipment and a variety of consumer goods. Production and consumption of steel is often regarded as the index of a country's development. Iron and steel is a heavy industry because all the raw materials as well as finished goods are heavy and bulky entailing heavy transportation costs. Iron ore, coking coal and limestone are required in the ratio of approximately 4. 2. 1. Some quantities of manganese are also required to harden the steel. Where should the steel plants be ideally located? Remember that the finished products also need an efficient transport network for their distribution to the markets and consumers. Today with 32.8 million tons of steel production, India ranks ninth among the world crude steel producers. It is the largest producer of sponge iron. In spite of large quantity of production of steel, per capita consumption per annum is only 32 kg. Why is the per capita consumption of steel so low in India? Processes of manufacture of steel. Fig. 6. 4. Presently, there are 10 primary integrated and many mini steel plants in India. See the appendix and mark these on the map of India. Most of the public sector undertakings market their steel through Steel Authority of India Limited. Sale, while Tisco markets its produce by itself in the name of Tata Steel. In the 1950s China and India produced almost the same quantity of steel. Today, China is the largest producer of steel. China is also the world's largest consumer of steel. In 2004, India was the largest exporter of steel which accounted for 2. 25% of the global steel trade. Chotanagpur Plateau region has the maximum concentration of iron and steel industries. It is largely because of the relative advantages this region has for the development of this industry. India. Iron and steel plants. Fig. 6. 5. Steel production in India and China. These include, low cost of iron ore, high-grade raw materials in proximity, cheap labor and vast growth potential in the home market. Though, India is an important iron and steel producing country in the world yet, we are not able to perform to our full potential largely due to a. High costs and limited availability of coking coal b. Lower productivity of labor c. A regular supply of energy and d. Poor infrastructure. We also import good quality steel from other countries. 
However, the overall production of steel is sufficient to meet our domestic demand. Many steel plants are smaller, have electric furnaces, use steel scrap and sponge iron. They have re-rollers that use steel ingots as well. They produce mild and alloy steel of given specifications. An integrated steel plant is large, handles everything in one complex, from putting together raw material to steel making, rolling and shaping. Liberalization and foreign direct investment have given a boost to the industry with the efforts of private entrepreneurs. There is a need to allocate resources for research and development to produce steel more computatively. Activity. Make a list of all such goods made of steel that you can think of. Activity. Table 5. 2. Total finished steel production in India. Year. Production. In million tons per annum. 60. Represent the given data with a bar diagram. Have you read about the Kalinganagar controversy? Collect information from different sources and discuss. Aluminium smelting. Aluminium smelting is the second most important metallurgical industry in India. It is light, resistant to corrosion, a good conductor of heat, malleable and becomes strong when it is mixed with other metals. It is used to manufacture aircraft, utensils and wires. It has gained popularity as a substitute of steel, copper, zinc and lead in a number of industries. Fig. 6. 6. Strip Coasting Mill at Smelter of Nalco. There are eight aluminium smelting plants in the country located in Orissa, Nalco and Balco, West Bengal, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. In 2004, India produced over 600 million tons of aluminium. Fig. 6. 7. Fig. 6. 8. Bauxite The raw material used in the smelters is a very bulky, dark reddish colored rock. The flow chart given below shows the process of manufacturing aluminium. Regular supply of electricity and an assured source of raw material at minimum cost are the two prime factors for location of the industry. Activity. A factory produces aluminium saucepans with plastic handles. It obtains aluminium from a smelter and a plastic component from another factory. All the manufactured saucepans are sent to a warehouse. 1. Of which raw material is likely to be most expensive to transport and why? B. Which raw material is likely to be the cheapest to transport and why? 2. Do you think the cost of transporting the finished products after packaging is likely to be cheaper or more expensive than the cost of transporting aluminium and plastic? Why? Chemical industries. The chemical industry in India is fast growing and diversifying. It contributes approximately 3% of the GDP. It is the third largest in Asia and occupies the 12th place in the world in term of its size. It comprises both large and small-scale manufacturing units. Rapid growth has been recorded in both inorganic and organic sectors. Inorganic chemicals include sulfuric acid, used to manufacture fertilizers, synthetic fibers, plastics, adhesives, paints, dyes, stuffs, nitric acid, alkalis, soda ash, used to make glass, soaps and detergents, paper, and caustic soda. These industries are widely spread over the country. Why do you think it is so? Activity. Find out where the plants are located in other states of India. Find their names. Organic chemicals include petrochemicals, which are used for manufacturing of synthetic fibers, synthetic rubber, plastics, dye stuffs, drugs and pharmaceuticals. Organic chemical plants are located near oil refineries or petrochemical plants. The chemical industry is its own largest consumer. Basic chemicals undergo processing to further produce other chemicals that are used for industrial application, agriculture or directly for consumer markets. Make a list of the products you are aware of. Fertilizer industry. The fertilizer industry is centered around the production of nitrogenous fertilizers, mainly urea, phosphatic fertilizers and ammonium phosphate DAP, and complex fertilizers which have a combination of nitrogen, N, phosphate P, and potash K. The third, I, E, potash is entirely imported as the country does not have any reserves of commercially usable potash or potassium compounds in any form. India is the third largest producer of nitrogenous fertilizers. 
There are 57 fertilizer units manufacturing nitrogenous and complex nitrogenous fertilizers, 29 for urea and 9 for producing ammonium sulfate as a byproduct and 68 other small units produce single superphosphate. At present, there are 10 public sector undertakings and one in cooperative sector at Hazira in Gujarat under the Fertilizer Corporation of India. After the Green Revolution the industry expanded to several other parts of the country. Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Kerala contribute towards half the fertilizer production. Other significant producers are Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra, Assam, West Bengal, Goa, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka. Cement industry. Cement is essential for construction activities such as building houses, factories, bridges, roads, airports, dams and for other commercial establishments. This industry requires bulky and heavy raw materials like limestone, silica, alumina and gypsum. Coal and electric power are needed apart from rail transportation. The industry has strategically located plants in Gujarat that have suitable access to the market in the Gulf countries. Activity. Where would it be economically viable to set up the cement manufacturing units? The first cement plant was set up in Chennai in 1904. After independence the industry expanded. The control of price and distribution since 1989 and other policy reforms led the cement industry to make rapid strides in capacity, process, technology and production. There are 128 large plants and 332 mini cement plants in the country. India produces a variety of cement. Improvement in the quality has found the produce a readily available market in East Asia, Middle East, Africa and South Asia apart from a large demand within the country. This industry is doing well in terms of production as well as export. Efforts are being made to generate adequate domestic demand and supply in order to sustain this industry. Automobile industry. Automobiles provide vehicle for quick transport of goods services and passengers. Trucks, buses, cars, motorcycles, scooters, three-wheelers and multi-utility vehicles are manufactured in India at various centers. After the liberalization, the coming in of new and contemporary models stimulated the demand for vehicles in the market, which led to the healthy growth of the industry including passenger cars, two- and three-wheelers. This industry had experienced a quantum jump in less than 15 years. Foreign direct investment brought in new technology and aligned the industry with global developments. At present, there are 15 manufacturers of passenger cars and multi-utility vehicles, 9 of commercial vehicles, 14 of the 2 and 3 wheelers. The industry is located around Delhi, Gurgaon, Mumbai, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow, Indore, Hyderabad, Jamshedpur and Bangalore. Information Technology and Electronics Industry the electronics industry covers a wide range of products from transistor sets to television, telephones, cellular telecom, pagers, telephone exchange, radars, computers and many other equipments required by the telecommunication industry. Bangalore has emerged as the electronic capital of India. Other important centers for electronic goods are Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow and Coimbatore. 18 software technology parks provide single window service and high data communication facility to software experts. A major impact of this industry has been on employment generation. Up to the 31st of March 2005, the IT industry employed over 1 million persons. This number is expected to increase eightfold in the next three to four years. It is encouraging to know that 30% of the people employed in this sector are women. This industry has been a major foreign exchange earner in the last two or three years because of its fast-growing business processes outsourcing BPO, sector. The continuing growth in the hardware and software is the key to the success of IT industry in India. Fig. 6. 9. Cable Manufacturing Facilities at HCL, Rupnarainpur, West Bengal. Fig. 6. 10. Gas Turbine Rotor and Assembly Bed at BHEL, Hyderabad. Industrial pollution and environmental degradation. Although industries contribute significantly to India's economic growth and development, the increase in pollution of land, water, air, noise and resulting degradation of environment that they have caused cannot be overlooked. Industries are responsible for four types of pollution. At air, B, water, C, land, D, noise. The polluting industries also include thermal power plants. India. Software technology parks. Air pollution is caused by the presence of high proportion of undesirable gases, such as sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide. 
Airborne particulate materials contain both solid and liquid particles like dust, sprays, mist and smoke. Smoke is emitted by chemical and paper factories, brick kilns, refineries and smelting plants, and burning of fossil fuels in big and small factories that ignore pollution norms. Toxic gas leaks can be very hazardous with long-term effects. Are you aware of the Bhopal gas tragedy that occurred? Air pollution adversely affects human health, animals, plants, buildings and the atmosphere as a whole. Water pollution is caused by organic and inorganic industrial wastes and effluents discharged into rivers. The main culprits in this regard are paper, pulp, chemical, textile and dyeing, petroleum refineries, tanneries and electroplating industries that let out dyes, detergents, acids, salts and heavy metals like lead and mercury pesticides, fertilizers, synthetic chemicals with carbon, plastics and rubber, etc. Into the water bodies. Fly ash, phospho gypsum and iron and steel slags are the major solid wastes in India. Thermal pollution of water occurs when hot water from factories and thermal plants is drained into rivers and ponds before cooling. What would be the effect on aquatic life? Wastes from nuclear power plants, nuclear and weapon production facilities cause cancers, birth defects and miscarriages. Soil and water pollution are closely related. Dumping of waste, especially glass, harmful chemicals, industrial effluents, packaging, salts and garbage renders the soil useless. Rainwater percolates to the soil carrying the pollutants to the ground and the groundwater also gets contaminated. Noise pollution not only results in irritation and anger, it can also cause hearing impairment, increased heart rate and blood pressure among other physiological effects. Unwanted sound is an irritant and a source of stress. Industrial and construction activities, machinery, factory equipment, generators, saws and pneumatic and electric drills also make a lot of noise. Control of environmental degradation. Every liter of waste water discharged by our industry pollutes eight times the quantity of fresh water. How can the industrial pollution of fresh water be reduced? Some suggestions are. I. Minimizing use water for processing by reusing and recycling it in two or more successive stages. E. Harvesting of rainwater to meet water requirements. E. Treating hot water and effluents before releasing them in rivers and ponds. Treatment of industrial effluents can be done in three phases. A primary treatment by mechanical means. This involves screening, grinding, flocculation and sedimentation. B. Secondary treatment by biological process. C. Tertiary treatment by biological, chemical and physical processes. This involves recycling of wastewater. Fig. 6. 11. Sewage treatment plant under Yamuna Action Palm at Faridabad. Overdrawing of groundwater reserves by industry where there is a threat to groundwater resources also needs to be regulated legally. Particulate matter in the air can be reduced by fitting smoke stacks to factories with electrostatic precipitators, fabric filters, scrubbers and inertial separators. Smoke can be reduced by using oil or gas instead of coal in factories. Machinery and equipment can be used and generators should be fitted with silencers. Almost all machinery can be redesigned to increase energy efficiency and reduce noise. Noise absorbing material may be used apart from personal use of earplugs and earphones. The challenge of sustainable development requires integration of economic development with environmental concerns. NTPC shows the way. NTPC is a major power providing corporation in India. It has ISO certification for EMS, Environment Management System, 14001. The corporation has a proactive approach for preserving the natural environment and resources like water, oil and gas and fuels in places where it is setting up power plants. This has been possible through a optimum utilization of equipment adopting latest techniques and upgrading existing equipment. B. Minimizing waste generation by maximizing ash utilization. C. Providing green belts for nurturing ecological balance and addressing the question of special purpose vehicles for afforestation. D. Reducing environmental pollution through ash pond management, ash water recycling system and liquid waste management. E. Ecological monitoring, reviews and online database management for all its power stations. Fig. 6. 12. Ramagundam plant. Exercises. 1. Multiple choice questions. I. Which one of the following industries uses limestone as a raw material? A. Aluminium. B. Cement. C. Sugar. D. Jute. E. Which one of the following agencies markets steel for the public sector plants? A. Hale. B. Sale. C. Tata Steel. D. MNCC. E. Which one of the following industries uses bauxite as a raw material? 
At aluminium, B, cement, C, jute, D, steel. IV, which one of the following industries manufactures telephones, computer, etc. At steel, C, aluminium. B, electronic, D, information technology. 2. Answer the following briefly in not more than 30 words. I, what is manufacturing? E, name any three physical factors for the location of the industry. E, name any three human factors for the location of an industry. IV, what are basic industries? Give an example. B, name the important raw materials used in the manufacturing of cement. 3. Write the answers of the following questions in 120 words. I, how are integrated steel plants different from mini steel plants? What problems does the industry face? What recent developments have led to a rise in the production capacity? E, how do industries pollute the environment? E, discuss the steps to be taken to minimize environmental degradation by industry. Activity. Give one word for each of the following with regard to industry. The number of letters in each word are hinted in brackets. I, used to drive machinery, 5P. E, people who work in a factory, 6W. E, where the product is sold, 6M. IV, a person who sells goods, 8R. V, thing produced, 7P. B, to make or produce, 11M. B, land, water and air degraded, 9P. Project work. Select one agro-based and one mineral-based industry in your area. I, what are the raw materials they use? E, what are the other inputs in the process of manufacturing that involve transportation cost? E, are these factories following environmental norms? Activity. Solve the puzzle by following your search horizontally and vertically to find the hidden answers. GGGPVARANASI UOJIPGXKMQMV KSUGARCANEEN OTTONOZVOPTR AUELUBHILAIU TKOCRAQNTRLN EIRONSTELSJ ENANOEPITLRY GANUJDRAGDTA NTARPOAPUEPY ASNAENJDIYSK SMHVLIAJHSKG 1. Textiles, sugar, vegetable oil and plantation industries deriving raw materials from agriculture are called 2. The basic raw material for sugar industry 3. This fiber is also known as the golden fiber. 4. Iron ore, coking coal, and limestone are the chief raw materials of this industry. 5. A public sector steel plant located in Chhattisgarh. 6. Railway diesel engines are manufactured in Uttar Pradesh at this place.